One aim of this student project was to decipher the several pages of Sir Thomas Mitchell's field notes he had taken when he performed the survey of Newcastle in 1828. Included in Sir Thomas Mitchell's field notes were the sketches he produced of Newcastle, illustrating the landscape and prominent features from two separate locations. One being Signal Hill, currently known as Fort Scratchley, and two Prospect Hill, currently the location of the obelisk. This particular sketch that Mitchell produced is looking towards Prospect Hill and the shoreline of Newcastle Harbour. The illustration shows extraordinary amount of detail Thomas displayed in sketching each prominent feature that he observed. As can be seen, the features were also labelled alphabetically and numerically by Mitchell. Some of the features Thomas identified included Point I, an old flag stump. <coughs> this is currently located at Fletcher Park. Point M, the pre-renovated Christchurch Cathedral. And Point O, the end of a wooden jetty, which is currently the roundabout at Wolf Road and Watch Street. Also, Point G, a windmill, currently the obelisk, is an important feature illustrated by Mitchell, as this is the location of his second station. It is also the location of where he produced the next one of his sketches from. Mitchell is currently standing at point G, with the sketch shown looking towards Signal Hill. Again, the level of detail expressed by Thomas is significant and evident from his sketches. Newcastle Harbour, Stockton and Nobbies have been illustrated, along with the previously identified features that were referred to in his first sketch. Points M, O and I, along with the reference made in location's first station, being where he produced the previous sketch from. Also in Sir Thomas Mitchell's field notes were two pages of angular observations observed to each prominent feature the, that he identified and labelled alphabetically and numerically in his previous sketches. The angles between these features have been measured in degrees minutes, which is recognised by every number following the decimal point being less than 60. Furthermore, the theodolite used by Mitchell in 1828 could measure angles both vertically and horizontally to the nearest minute, which supports this conclusion. At first, the ambiguous method used by Mitchell in booking his angle observations to any prominent feature is unclear. However, with the aid of his sketches and investigations into what he was observing, the technique applied by Thomas could be better understood. The far left column shows Mitchell's first set of angle observations, where he has set zero degrees as a back site to point M, the church cathedral, then measured the angles to each feature in a clockwise direction from the church. The first angle measured is L with M, reading an angle of 6 degrees 55 minutes, and the second angle measured is G with M, producing an angle of 11 degrees 32 minutes. This method has been used throughout his observations, where back sites have been set, and angles to each feature measured in either a clockwise or anti clockwise direction from the zero degree reference. As can be seen, where he has measured M with N, reading an angle of 3 degrees 43 minutes, in a clockwise direction. The page of observations also displays numerous stations that Thomas Mitchell used in measuring the angles between these prominent features. Station at Bonfire at Newcastle was Thomas's first station set up, and station three at point 10, his third station position, and continues to position stations around Newcastle with a total of 15, allowing Mitchell to reobserve the majority of the identified features that he previously cited to. This provided an accuracy determination of his observations with multiple readings allowing an error to be calculated from their differences, as we'll be seeing later. Vertical angles or elevations were also measured by Thomas with six of its measurements to both the 40 foot and 30 foot flagstaffs that stood atop of Signal Hill in 1828. 